there's perhaps no greater symbol for the state of Texas than our own blue bonnet, but they can be problematic to get established in our yards. It's amazing that they're beautiful in fields along the roadsides, but many people are frustrated with trying to get blue bonnets growing in their own home garden. Now, if you have a heavy clay soil, blue bonnets will just not be happy there. They need full sun. They like alkaline soil, but good drainage is actually the probably the biggest key. They don't compete well with St. Augustine or Bermuda lawns, so you really are not going to be successful with establishing them in healthy lawns. There are many colors available with blue bonnets these days, and you can find transplants in the nurseries and garden centers in December and January, typically. Uh, so that's a great way to get these new colors in, although you can find some of them by seed too, but the transplants are really the easiest way to go. And if you want to keep the colors true, keep them planted away from blue bonnets that are blue because that will become the dominant color and in successive years, you'll have fewer and fewer of your colors. Now, one of the things that's interesting about blue bonnets is their uh, pollination. They are pollinated by bees, and the little white spot on the flower turns to a maroon color after a bee has visited. And the bee lands on the bottom of the flower and pushes down the bottom of the flower, and a little wolf claw is evident inside that flower. And the, the pollen is inside that claw. So after the bee visits that spot, conveniently turns to maroon so that other bees don't waste their time on that flower. So if you're picking blue bonnets for a flower arrangement, look for flowers that are mostly white because they'll last longer in arrangements. Also, the action of picking your blue bonnets regularly prevents them from going to seed. They're an annual, so that will keep your blue bonnets blooming even longer if you can prevent their going to seed. But you do want to make sure that you let some of the blue bonnets go to seed so you'll have them coming back in the same spot. Now, it's important not to mow too early. Sometimes people don't like the ragged look of their blue bonnets and they mow them too early and that's why they don't come back again next year. So when the blue bonnets have these kind of fuzzy seed pods, open up a pot or two. Inside, the seed should not be green. They should look brown or grayish and look almost like little gravel pieces. They're very, very hard when they're mature. At that point, you can mow your blue bonnets and they'll come back for you. Sometimes the seeds will actually split open and they'll throw the, the seeds everywhere. So scattering them even widely. Now you can take the blue bonnet hay after you've mowed the blue bonnets, take that blue bonnet hay and put it in other places and extend your blue bonnets to other areas and you'll have uh, even more blue bonnets to look forward to in the next year. So those are some of the ways that you can get blue bonnets growing and established in your own guard garden and uh, enjoy the state flower for many years to come.